Yes, good, good, good. So we've got three good ones. <laughs> Hi, it's Todd of Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here, and today I am back at very long last with Mail and Type 16 heads. Mail very generously, well, made and donated by Isaac Crow. Handmade, hand riveted, beautiful, beautiful stuff. 1.75 mil wire. Now then, highly authentic, highly accurate medieval armour, both the Gamberson and the Mail. And we're going to be shooting these from our lockdown longbow. Now, a 160 pound longbow is great and I think that's probably the height of the power and that's the one that I want to use today but I realistically cannot hit this target at 50 or 75 meters at a realistic range so if I do it close it's not a realistic result but here's the thing if you look at this chrono test I did with my 125 pound simulator here it shoots the heavyweight arrows out from a 10 meter distance with a 9% speed loss. That is the same I'm getting at 75 meters off the lockdown longbow. So if I use the lighter one here, it is basically like for like of me shooting the arrows at a 75 meter distance. So it might look close, but we're gonna call it the 160 pound longbow at a 75 meter range. It's not, it's a cheat. But like all these cheats, it works for this. Isaac very generously sent me four samples to have a look and indeed a shoot at. In fact, I've decided just to do one in the end. But the heaviest one here is two millimeter, two millimeter wire. And you know, that really is quite heavy, but I decided not to do that because I just want to do something representative. So then we've got 1.4 millimeter, seven mil links. And then the one that we're using, 1.75 with nine millimeter links. So it's still fairly heavy mail. And then the last one that again, I haven't used is a 1.4 on nine millimeter links. So a little bit lighter there, but these are all wedge riveted handmade by Isaac Crow, amazing stuff. But anyway, enough of all that chit chat. We all wanna go see what happens when you shoot this stuff. So let's go down to the range. Down on the range now with my male and Gamerson sample with the male away from me. So the arrow is gonna strike the Gamerson first. Basically, I'm just hoping to, you know, make the arrow survive for the next part of the test, really. That's all mounted onto some roofing insulation foam. And here we go, let's see what happens. Straight in, lovely. So that has gone, well, through the fabric, through the mail. Uh, but more to the point, it's in the center of the piece. So it's, a, it's a, good, a good telling example. Let's go again. Good, another one just in it, just in. Just above, just above. Mm. You know what? I'm gonna leave that in place because we're gonna go have a look at that. Well, here we are with my first shots. This was the first one and it has gone in, I can tell you now, 11 centimeters. So it's gone clean through the Gamerson, the male behind and to a depth of 11 centimeters marked off there. But that is definitely a good shot. Second shot, right on the edge. And that has gone in uh, 23 mil uh, centimeters. And again, this one, 23 centimeters. So that one may or may not have clipped the male. That one definitely has missed it. But that does mean it shows you exactly what the difference is between hitting the Gamberson without the mail and with the mail. So it does offer you, well, it, more than halves, more than halves the penetration of the arrow. Into the roofing foam, it's obviously not a uh, flesh proxy. But let's just pull that and we'll see what we've got. Okay. Ah, there we have it. Here's our answer. This one completely missed the mail. And this one hit one ring of the mail and just sprung it. So it popped that ring, but right on the edge. So that's not really gonna be a very representative shot. So I think we've got to shoot again. I'm gonna replace those roofing foam blocks. So we have virgin blocks again, and we'll go again. I've sharpened them up, polished them up. See if I can hit it this time. Yes, good, good, good. Nice, good, solid one. And for whatever it means, going clean through. Yes, good, good, good. So we've got three good ones. Well, here we are, our three good shots. They're all far enough away that they shouldn't have interfered with each other. The material they've all hit is clean and virgin. So it is a, a real unaffected by previous shots test. But it's also an interesting spread of numbers here. So this one is 11 centimeters on the first, as we said. This one here, it's just the head gone in, so five, you know, that's probably in that far through the whole material. So that's certainly not 
not a mortal wound. And then this one here has gone in 25, 20, 17 centimeters. Well, here it is from the nasty side, uh, and you can quite clearly see the difference in, in the depth of penetration there. But to be honest, they all look pretty much like they have split one ring. They haven't gone through two. I pulled the first two arrows and they did just split one link. But this last one here that hardly went in at all, what it's actually done is it split one link, but then just chance, the way the arrowhead happened to fall within the mail, it's then tried to spread two more links. It's, it's trying to shift them out the way and they won't go out of the way because they're connected to the others. So basically, yes, it split one link, but just by chance, there are two more links now completely blocking its way. And that's why it came to a dead halt. Next up, the male is on the outside of the gambeson. Freshly sharpened heads. Let's shoot it, see what happens. The orange spots are the previous strike, so we get some idea of how close these are to a bad one. Yes. Hey, well that's in. Yes, good. Another clean one. But they both look like they're very in. Yes, good. Okay, three good strikes. Let's see what we got. Here we are with our three. I thought I'd show you this before I disturb things because this top one has just clipped it again. It's just gone in, but it's not really representative. So I'm gonna pull that in a minute. But to make sure I haven't disturbed anything, I'm gonna show you now. <clears throat> okay, so that did split a link and it's that deep. So three centimeters. So barely, barely touching the body underneath, I would think. This one here, is five centimeters, six centimeters deep. So again, you know, not so much you can see it wobbling. And this one here is, is 11 again, 10 or 11, but it's, you know, right on the edge. So I'm gonna pull that, we're gonna go again. Here we go again, freshly sharpened. Let's see. Yeah, good, good, good. Right, let's have a look. This was the last shot here. So away, enough away from the compromised areas. And again, the head hasn't even gone beneath the male, so slightly more than the other, but maybe four centimetres. Let's see, it might be a bit of a... Yeah, okay, the barbs are caught. It's not gonna, it's not gonna come, but let's have a look. Well, here it is. One inch, 25 millimetres for the worst of those two. And of course, the one I pulled out already went in the least of all three. Does it make a difference? Yes, it does. Well, back at base now to conclude. And I think the first part of the conclusion is really very simple. Wear your mail on the outside. I think it did exactly what David Jones has said it would, which is that it blunts the faces of the arrowheads. It stops them going through the fabric effectively. So we've got a cumulative depth, if we shoot this way, of all three arrows of around about 13 centimetres. But you can see that's 13 centimetres from the front face, not from the back face. Probably only 50, 60 millimetres, five, six centimetres on the back face cumulatively. But the other way round, if you shot it from the fabric side, from the gambeson side and into the male, then you've got much deeper penetration. And that's because the arrowheads maintain their sharpness through the fabric. And then yes, they get blunted by the male, but they've still got loads of energy at that point, And so they go on to penetrate. So you very, very much want to wear your male on the outside. Now that brings me on to the next point of the conclusion really is people from the past aren't stupid. It's absolutely a, a trope of Hollywood films and, and a lot of people seem to consider that the people from the past, our ancestors, were stupid. Well, they weren't. They were the absolute kings of observing their environment and what worked and what didn't work. This worked. Now they knew that mail was really good against cutting blades. So that's great. Todd Cutler piece here. But they're not good against penetration. So what you do is you back up the uh, the male, which is good against cutting, and the fabric not so good against cutting, but you back that up with the fabric, so once the arrowhead goes in and gets blunted by the male, it doesn't penetrate. So it really is just a very clever thing. But this brings me on to the third point of this conclusion, really, is composite armour, and nothing has changed. You know, do a Google, do a Wikipedia search on tank armour, as an example. It is composite armour, a lot of body armour, composite armour and it was the same back then. So what I mean by that is different elements to it. Some which defend against some weapons, some which defend against others, some which 
dissipate the forces in particular ways so that then the next part of the armor picks it up better and so on clever stuff six seven eight hundred years ago composite armor they knew what they were doing anyway so here we are so thank you isaac crow for letting me uh, destroy your mail it must be said it has not been returned as i found it sorry uh and thank you very much for watching mail gambersons and type 16 sharp arrowheads thank you <laughs>